Welcome to the Sun Foundation's virtual clean water celebration, Clean Water Champions. Today, we are going on an unusual kind of field trip. We are going to fly on butterflies' wings from the prairies of the Midwest all the way to Mexico. How can we help the butterflies in this migration? What can you do to not only protect these tiny creatures, but think about it. What is the role of the smallest creature in the big picture? And when we protect the habitat for these creatures, how does that impact all life? Let's meet a couple ladies who are raising monarch butterflies, tagging them to chart their migrations to Mexico and back. I'd like to introduce Katie Enley. She's the chairman of the Central Illinois Monarch Butterfly Task Force. And this is Karen Logan, and she is the co-chair. The task force was formed a few years ago, quite a few years ago, through Peoria Garden Club. The um, state president has a project, and her project was the Monarch Butterflies. So we formed an outreach community organization for the Monarch Butterflies. So the life cycle of a Monarch Butterfly is miraculous. Well, the butterfly has to find milkweed. That's the only thing she'll lay her eggs on, the only thing the larvae will eat. And she finds it through her antennas, through smelling and tasting with her feet. She may go to a number of different plants before she finds the one she wants. And she usually lays the egg underneath the leaf for protection. And it's the size of a pinhead. And she can lay up to 500 eggs. Usually it's between three to 500 eggs. So after uh, the egg is laid, usually it's about a few days, up to three days before the caterpillar comes out of the egg. And in monarch terms, or in butterfly terms, we say larva. Um, and so the monarch larva grows very fast um, due to how much milkweed it has to eat in its short lifespan. It will grow up to 270 times. If you compare that to a human, from a baby to the size of a monarch, it's the size of a school bus. So a child would grow to be the size of a school bus. So it molts up to five times. It will shed its skin every time. Every time it's about approximately five days between each molting. So it eats and eats and then it molts again. And the whole cycle is approximately 30 days. Mm -hmm. So eventually when it stops growing, it will find a quiet little place and it will hang upside down. It will attach itself from its bottom by spinning some silk. And it's like, um, the silk is like a spider web. And eventually it will shed its skin the last time. And that will be the chrysalis. And then it stays in the chrysalis for about how many days would you say? It's again, about five days on the average for each stage, depending on temperature. So the chrysalis is green. Um, it's, it's more of a jade look, but after, when it's getting close to emerging, it will turn transparent and you will see the orange and black, the monarch through it. And the monarch comes out of its chrysalis upside down, which is pretty amazing to see. And then it will hang upside down for a number of hours. It has to dry it before it can fly. Its body is extremely huge. When looking at a butterfly, the wings are teeny tiny and the body is full of fluid and it has to pump that fluid into the veins of the wings to expand their wings so that it can fly. And you want to let them dry about 24 hours. If you release in nature, they don't have 24 hours always. But if you consider it like a paper airplane compared to a Kleenex airplane, that's how the wings are when they first come out. They're soft and flimsy and you want them stronger, so you let them dry 24 hours for those of us who raise them inside mm -hmm. before we release them. During the non-migration time, monarch butterflies live uh, two to five weeks, depending. And, but during the migration, um, they will live up to six months when they are hibernating. The life cycle goes on around here. It can go up to five times, depending all upon the weather. Mm -hmm. But then when they fly south, that is one generation, and it's called the super monarchs. So the super monarchs will fly all the way south to Mexico and hibernate in trees, and they fly up to 3,000 miles. There are five generations in one year for them to complete their life cycle, that from the ones that come up from Mexico to the ones that go back down. 
to Mexico. You can tell the migrators from the first generation we have here because the wings are much bigger than the first generation. Mm -hmm. So you always know when they're getting ready to go and this is our last generation and it's time to start tagging them mm -hmm. so that if you wanna track them. And these are little stickers um, about the size. It's actually, they're smaller than a dime, just a little bit smaller than a dime. And we put the sticker on the monarch's wing and the purpose of this is to see if our monarch will make it all the way to Mexico. So years ago, this is how they first discovered mm -hmm. that monarchs actually migrate. And you put it on the bottom the wing by the mitten so that when the people that are identifying them, that's where they'll look so that they don't have to look all over the butterfly. If everybody puts them in the same spot down by the mitten, that it's easy to identify them that way. And mm -hmm. they found that that's easier for them to fly. So really the biggest thing you can do for monarchs is to plant milkweed. So in your, in your backyard and pots, anywhere that you can plant milkweed and some nectar sources, especially you know for bees, bees are very important just like our butterflies. Um, you know, the more nectar sources we have, the better. And there are 23 different varieties of native milkweed for Illinois. So it's not just the common one that everybody thinks they need to get rid of. The farmers thought it was taking over their fields and things. There's a lot of beautiful ones out there that people don't even know about that grow in the timbers, the po poke and the swamp and everything else. There, so there's a variety. And you can grow milkweed with your vegetables. So if you are living in the city and you just have a little area, you know, you can put milkweed by a tomato plant or by a pepper plant just in your backyard. Just even if you have a little area, it's important to plant things for our insects. You know, the monarch is the state insect. So um, it really is our responsibility to help these, these critters. These are milkweed uh, pods from the fall when um, after the monarchs have flown away, after they've flown to Mexico, um, you can go out and collect these in your backyard or in a ditch. You'll find them in the ditch, mm -hmm. wherever you can find these, or you can buy milkweed from your local nursery. You see them along the road. If there's five of them, you gather three, leave two be. So the call to action is to plant milkweed. Plant more milkweed. Milkweed is crucial to help our monarchs not go extinct. Wasn't that some beautiful film footage that they provided? And really cool to get, see the close-up of the egg and the, the chrysalis, the hatching. What can we do about it? What can you do to not only help monarchs, but all varieties of pollinators who help pollinate all of the food? What can we do to protect habitat or restore habitat? Because we know when the birds and the bees and butterflies are healthy, so are we. And if we do our part, you too can be a clean water champion.